thing we're going to do with our cartridges, our brass cases that is, we're going to take and give them a cleaning. So you can tell those are not quite as bright. I'll show you some new ones here. See the difference in the two. This is a brand new unfired cartridge. Here's a once fired cartridge. So you can see the little bit, little bit of difference in them. What we're going to do is we're going to toss these in here. Spin them up for about an hour and a half. And then they'll come out looking almost brand new. You see that's a spent cartridge and they almost look pretty darn new. So we'll get that process going. And Using Walnut Media by Lyman. As you can see it's a Turbo Tumble Media. These, this is a gallon jug. It's about $15 or $16. As you can tell, we don't use a whole lot of it. And when you get done, you have nice, bright, shiny cases that are all clean of all lube ready to be resized and reloaded. So we'll get all those dug out of here and okay, the first part of our step is to clean and lube the inside of our necks. So I would do that for each one of these in the process. Okay, the next step in our process is to resize the case. Now to do that we have to resize the full length of the case and deprime in one step. Now this is your 308 full length die set. Comes with two dies. This is your decapping resizing die. So you can see it's a full length die. So the shell the cartridge goes all the way in there and it resizes resizes the case and then deprimes the old primer. Okay, so get that one set up. Now for this particular stage, they recommend that you insert the die in the press, move the handle all the way down, and there you want it to barely touch the cap down here, the uh, shell holder. When that's accomplished, you're going to back it off a half a turn and then lock this down. Okay, once you got the inside cleaned out, now we're going to resize the entire case open the neck a little bit and that's what this die is for. Take a simple roll place it in the shell holder we're going to decap resize the entire length of the cartridge. You see there's no primer in there. Notice again I'm working from a left to right, putting the cartridges I've already completed in a different area than when I started from. So I'm moving from one side to the other. Okay, so our next step is now to clean out the primer pocket and to remove any burrs that might possibly be inside. You have a primer pocket cleaning tool. Simply just turn that around inside of the cartridge. See, it was real dirty before, now it's all nice and clean. Second step is to take your cleaner, reamer, and we're going to clean out the primer pocket in case there's any, anything stuck in there. And we'll do that to each round, each cartridge we do for reloading. And they do have an automatic tool for this if you don't want to do this by hand. It's a, kind of expensive, I think. But Okay, now that that's all done, and notice again that I keep rotating these empty blocks to my right side, so I only go one direction with each, each load. Now we're going to load up the primers. 
So you can see we have no primer in the pocket, but a very clean and resized case. So we need a primer tool. These are 308 rounds to take large rifle primers. What we do is take our priming tool and we're going to open this guy up. Expose about 50 primers or so. Now it doesn't really matter what what they look like when they go in there. This has ridges in there that allows you to simply shake it to get all the primers right side up. So you can see there they're all right side up now. Next goes on a cover that'll keep them that way. And the cover has a stop so it'll stop it from feeding. If you turn it through that little tab, you turn a little more opens that up so it'll slide right out. Let me put that in our primer tool. Open up the slot and we load a primer in there. As you can see there's a primer down and you can see that I don't have to primer down in the hole, it just slides right in, fits one at a time. Put our cartridge in, same shoulder that was in our press, pull the handle Voila, we have a primed case now. Doesn't take too much work to get those in there when the primer pocket's clean. You can see it's a fairly straightforward process. Always want to make sure they're seated properly. Doesn't take a whole lot of hand pressure. You see there's a nice smooth seat on that. I used to have the primer mounted on the press and it was really hard to feel that primer going in. With these you get a good feel of that primer seating properly. I'm going to do that for my entire tray again. Okay, now that we're finished with that step, move on to our next step, which for me is actually our last step for each cartridge. We have resized, cleaned, put a new primer in, now we're going to add powder and we're going to seat the bullet. Now to do that i got to change dies, i got to get the powder, proper powder out, get my book out, i got to get the right load, and then the right bullet I want to seat. Okay, we're all set up now to load our bullets, get them done. We have here is again the Sierra manual. As you can see here, I'm loading a 165 grain soft point boat tail. I'm going to be loading IMR 4895 to 2600 feet per second, which is 40.7 grains of powder. Okay, so I have only 30 caliber bullets that I'm going to be loading with. One Sierra 165 grain Spitzer boat tails. I only have the IMR 4895 powder. And I have readjusted and put my bullet cedar die in the press. And again, you can see I have my cartridges ready to go right here. I have my empty rack over here for the finished product and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first step in our process is to measure out the 40.7 grains of powder. We're upgraded to an electronic scale. Here we have our 40.7. So our funnel. Put that right in there on the next cartridge. Now we have it ready to go. We have powder, primer, put that into the press. And you get our actual bullets out. That's a 165 grain 30 caliber Spitzer boat tail. 
set that right on top of the case run it up into the cedar die voila we have a completed round just that easy one down a lot to go Take that right over our press, add a bullet on top, run it up into the cedar die, press her home. It's a final visual inspection, and the racket goes. It takes a little bit more. Now, contrary to what you see in the ads, sometimes in television, like you see Larry Potterfield, sometimes he has the whole rack, he's under there running the uh, powder measure right into the case. That's really not really a safe way to do it. You don't get accurate round-to-round -round loads. And if that's what you're reloading for is accuracy, you want to have it so that you measure each load, you have it ready to go, and they're all exactly the same. So everything is equal as far as the bullets go. Maybe different the way you shoot, but at least you know the bullets are on, cartridges are on target anyway. Point seven. Into the case. And just re repeat the process till you're all done with your particular load. <clears throat> now some guys will do all the powder at one time. I don't like to give it a chance to have anything fall in there in that open case. As you can see it's just an open case so if you like, get stuck in the middle now I can stop right now and not have to worry about having anything falling in here because I've, I've, it's an empty case. There's nothing to it. If I have to go away, I'll come back, blow them off with some air, make sure they're all empty again, and then I can start up again. If you do a whole rack, like if I were to take this whole rack and do case after case after case and get called away, now I've got all these with powder in it, no bullets, and something could, could, could get in there or could spill some out, could be a dud, you, could, you might have one that dumps over accidentally or somebody else, God forbid, could come in and mess up your cases, add more powder, dump out powder so you have a, just a dud. I'd rather have it one at a time so in case something did happen or got called away, I wouldn't have to worry about it. This way at least I know what I've got in each round. There's no doubt that I have 40.7 grains. Now I have added the new uh, electronic scale to my equipment list here. It's about a $120 option, but I think it's just more easier to have it do it this way where I can, I can see what goes in it every time rather than use the balance beam, which takes a little more time to get it back and forth. Okay, so there's my case, bullet, seat. Now these are non-crypt bullets. Sometimes you'll see a ridge line around the bullet. Uh, a lot of the older cartridges had that on them. And uh, you can uh, crimp these cases uh, with certain bullets. You might want to do that. With these particular ones you don't need to. They are a, a non-crimp type bullet. I think it gives you more consistent loads, more consistent shots. Okay, what did I do wrong? I didn't measure the load. See how easy you can get distracted? So 
So you got to do this in a process. Everything's a process. And now I know what's right. Move it over one, take the cartridge, go to the press, add a bullet, projectile, whatever you want to call it. There again, just a final check to make sure everything's good. Now I can probably load this whole rack of 50 rounds in about uh, 40 minutes. I'm, I'm doing a lot of talking here, so it's taking me more time than normal. But you can get the idea how quickly you can load ammo. Um, if you shoot a lot of custom stuff, you're going to want to do it this way. If you're shooting just for the pleasure of shooting, like if you're using a 223 or something, once you get this powder measure dialed in, it will throw ac pretty accurate loads, but you got to keep keep at it. Um, I'm shooting a 308 that is a uh, target rifle, and I prefer to have each load be the same so I know it's me, not the rifle or the cartridge. So once you get everything set up, it's pretty easy. You will have to set up your uh, sizer die, the first die I had in the press, <clears throat> and you will have to set up for your overall length, your bullet depth, seat seating depth, and your overall length of your cartridge. But once you get those dies set up properly, they, they repeat because you lock everything down. You're going to lock down the ring, you're going to lock down the, the cedar die. Uh, if you do change the type of bullet, like if you go from a 168, 65 grain to say a 175 grain, that's a little bit longer, you may need to change that bullet seat in there. So you have to experiment with that to see if it see if it fits correctly. And you do that by backing off the nut here, and then you back off the cedar uh, plunger, and then you slowly take one cartridge and you slowly work it down to where it's proper length. Uh, every because every bullet has a little different. Every manufacturer is a little different the way they make their the way they make their boat tails even. Like a, a Sierra boat tail might be a little different than a say a Hornaday boat tail or um, uh, spear, for instance. So you have little differences in the way that do, they do it, but you should check each round as you load, as you start to load. But again, once you get it set up properly and you have it all dialed, you'll be able to load ad infinitum with that particular load. And another nice thing about doing hand loads you can customize your load for the particular rifle. You might have to experiment a little bit with different styles, speeds, type of bullet. Uh, now my rifle happens to really like the 165 and 175 grain bullets. Um, anything lighter it kind of it kind of wants to go go awry but uh, you get an idea of, of how that bullet reacts in a particular situation at different speeds. You can experiment with your with your uh, chronometers if you have one and uh, check your bullet speed, check how your loads are going according to the book, you know, if they're if everything's good then you're good to go. You at least know what that projected bullet drop is going to be at range. <clears throat> Got about halfway through my rack here and I remember I want to tell you about um, you know, this isn't for everybody. Um, one of the things that make this a great hobby is if you do a lot of shooting. If you don't do a lot of shooting, or you don't do a lot of target shooting, and let's say you only burn through, gosh, maybe 50 rounds a year. I mean, it wouldn't behoove you to buy an expensive setup like this to reload 50 rounds a year. It'd be cheaper for you to buy factory ammo and just shoot that. But if you go out, let's say you go out, you know, four or five, six times a year, uh, you shoot uh, between 10 to 25, maybe 30 rounds per event you go to, like a practice event or whatever. Um, and you want to have some accuracy or you want to try experimenting with either hotter or cooler loads than what you're 
what your factory comes with. Now, factory member comes with pretty hot stuff. It's it's designed uh, for a particular thing, usually for hunting, not for target practice or or uh, plinking or anything else. So, you have factory things that are meant for a specific purpose, whereas hand loading, you can custom make your loads to do just about anything. Um, you really have an option when you do your custom loads. You can load down for particular range, you can load up for, tick for uh, long range shooting, you can you can do a lot of things to improve the way your your uh, sh rifle shoots. So you need to know that this really isn't an everybody sport or hobby uh, reloading. It is good if you want to do custom loads. It is not good or economical if you're doing loads for a few times a year. Um, we have I have friends who do uh, he have buddies that, that reload. Uh, myself, I have my son-in-law that I reload with, and we share the equipment, we share the cost. Uh, he does shoot a different weapon than I do. He shoots a 7mm Magnum. Um, so he has his own set of dies, he has his own uh, cartridge cases, he has everything that he needs to load. Uh, we went in uh, and split the cost of the press and the equipment so that we can and that another way to make your equipment cost a little less expensive but I will warn you that you need to yeah, be really friendly with your friend or your your shooting buddy because uh, you know nothing lasts forever and I've, I've seen good relationships go bad even amongst men and uh, you end up squabbling over the silliest things and this will be one of them um, so in some respects it's better to have your own equipment. Um, if you can't afford your own equipment and you want to do custom loading, you know, find a friend that wants to go in with you. Uh, but be forewarned that it, there'll, be, there'll come a time when you want to either, one of you is going to move, uh, one of you is, is done reloading and you want the other partner wants you to buy you out. Um, um, you know, for some reason he has to stop hunting, doesn't want to reload anymore. Uh, there's a gazillion reasons why people don't do this anymore, but there's more reasons to stick with it. Uh, one of them being that you can you can shoot, you can shoot custom loads. They are a little bit cheaper than uh, buying uh, you know manufactured loads, uh, regular like Remington, Winchester, Federal, that kind of thing. Uh, it is a little bit cheaper, and you do get customization. You don't you don't have to shoot what they think you should be shooting. It's what you want to shoot based on the type of hunting or shooting that you do as opposed to the standard standardized loads that the major manufacturers would do so if you do decide to go into this go into it knowing that either you're going to buy the equipment or if you and a friend are going to do it or a couple friends agreement has to be made beforehand just like anything how it's going to be split up should any one of you decide not to be part of this anymore um, you know, you can easily wrap up, uh, and we'll talk about this in our final video, but you can easily wrap up $1,000 in getting the equipment, getting the, the uh, stuff you need to reload, all the stuff that goes with it, uh, if you, yeah, especially if you're doing custom stuff. And you'll, you'll want to know how that's going to be split up should you decide that you don't want to do this anymore, or your partner. Um, you know, there's lots of places that that sell used equipment, that buy it for resale. Um, you know, loan shops are one of them. Uh, some sporting goods stores do it. Um, you know, based on what what they uh, sell depends on again what they have. But uh, I would be very wary of getting into something that I didn't know. You know, my other partner that well, or or uh, wasn't quite sure of what. Uh, what that person is doing it it'd be a close friend or uh, even a relative is even better but sometimes worse but at least you know that that they'll be around for a while and you know how to get a hold of them and then there's the other issue of 
you know, where do you have room to put the equipment? You know, is it at your house, is it at your friend's house? How often are you going to go over to your friend's house? You know, is it inconvenient for them to have company all the time to be reloading? Um, you know, are they concerned about the security of their house, garage, whatever? So, you know, you got to kind of weigh that out as far as how you're going to use the equipment. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to afford my own. Um, I have it here. My son-in-law comes over and uses it. He does have supply his own die set, his own powder, his, everything that he needs. But uh, the equipment stays with me and it will always stay with me. And I think as time goes by, you'll, you'll appreciate the equipment more if it's yours. And, um, you know, just make arrangements to have your, your friend, relative, or whatever, come over and load at your, at your uh, timing, not theirs. And there's going to be those times when you don't feel like reloading and they do. So that's another issue you have to worry about too. So. Hope you get a good idea of how this all works. I mean, you can see that it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And really easy to do. Our last bullet in, and I've got a full rack. Thing of beauty. I'd highly recommend getting some sort of a. These are MTM cases. They're very inexpensive. I think they're like three, four dollars a piece. Um, and the reason you do this is you don't want to have any undue pressure put on your your cases. And there you have it. 50 rounds ready to go.